this point, we want to welcome our, the online viewers that are joining our service. And I would like to, at this point, invite, invite the choir up to join me for our choir anthem this morning, which is Feed My Lambs.
face, face first down into the ground. This ends our reading of this morning's scripture. So when I, was, uh, when I was a child, 12 or 13 years old, something like that, my sister, my youngest sister was like three, a little more than three years younger than me. So she was probably nine or 10, and we were horsing around. I don't know where my mom was. She was either out or she was, she was um, uh, somewhere else. But so, so I was carrying my sister piggyback. And we were running around the house, and either she got heavy or was just ready. I went over to the couch, and I threw her off on the couch, and there was a crack. Fortunately, the crack was not my sister. It was the couch. The leg on the couch had buckled. So we did what any good kids would do. I lifted up the couch, and my sister very carefully straightened up the leg and put it down, and it stayed. Great, okay, just don't sit on it, okay? And, uh, you know, and I don't really remember exactly what happened, but the story continues. Uh, 30 years later, it's like 30 years later, and uh, I'm with my mom, and uh, somehow I think of this incident, and I said, Mom, I have a confession to make. Many, many years ago, uh, Mary and I were messing around we broke the couch. And my mom, if you know my mom, this is like, you know, a vintage mom. All she did was she looked at me and she said, all these years I thought I broke the couch. <laughs> so, you know, kids try to hide things, but the truth of the matter is, adults try to hide things too. I mean, we come to church and we want everybody else in church to think we got the life, we got the perfect. I mean, not that we're we got everything, but that we're good, that that uh, that we don't have these flaws. But the truth of the matter is, everybody has flaws. Everybody has problems. Everybody here has problems. Some of them may not even really be your fault. You know, um, perhaps. Sexual abuse as a child, and and you still have anger and bitterness over it. You know, um, that may be addiction to drugs or alcohol, pornography or gambling, and there's all kinds of things. Fear, anxiety, or even worse, a number of people have shame over things. Some people have shame over things they've done. Some people have shame over things people did to them, and that's not good. Really, they still have shame. Sometimes it's financial, you know, financial problems. Sometimes it's marital problems, relationship problems. The thing is, we all have problems, and they almost can seem insurmountable at times. And yet they're not. And this whole, this whole thing from David, the story of David, uh, as, as Luke was saying, we're pretty familiar with. But I want to look at it this way. David had a Goliath of a problem. And his Goliath of a problem just happened to be named Goliath, right? This big enemy soldier who was willing to take on any soldier from the Israelite army. And whoever would win that battle would win the war. And, um, but there's four things I see David did that I think can help us with whatever issues that you're dealing with, what I'm dealing with. Four things. And uh, I'm going to go over them each pretty quickly. The first is this. David faced Goliath. He faced his problem. David faced his problem. Because not everybody was willing to. I'm going to go back a few verses to verse 24. All the Israelites, when they saw Goliath, fled from him and were very much afraid. They ran away. These are seasoned soldiers who ran away. 
right? Because they're afraid. But it was David who would face Goliath, who had the courage to face Goliath. What a difference that made. And, and I think so many times, so many of us aren't really willing to face our problems. So I, I was, I saw a, a questionnaire once that was filled out by an alcoholic. And obviously one of the first questions is, why do you drink? And the answer was, because I'm depressed. One problem trying to trade another problem for one problem. I mean, you know, we try to cover these things up. How much drug and alcohol abuse is there? Because they're trying to cover up something else going on in their life. And sometimes we don't want to face problems. Sometimes we don't think we can face problems because maybe people won't understand. But we end up hiding from our problems. And, and we really shouldn't do this. I, I, I really urge you to find someone you can confide in. Don't tell everybody. And there's people you can't trust, obviously. But people you can confide in to tell what's going on. Or, or maybe a counselor. There's no shame in going to a counselor or a therapist. Because, you know, I think what happens sometimes is we lose perspective on life. We tend to think certain things are a big deal when they're not as big a deal, or, or vice versa, you know? And sometimes we just need somebody else's help to help us figure out what's really important what's not as important. I think that happens to us all the time. We just sort of lose that perspective. And I think what happens is if we do this, if we talk to the right people, we're going to find we're not alone. So, um, at the last weekend, I was at last weekend, uh, why I was not here, um, I was, I think it was around the lunch table and I was talking about a situation in my own family. And, um, and, and I don't want to say what that is because in a public setting, it could make it worse, you know, sort of thing. And, um, and, and Rand came up to me afterwards, it was on the walk, and he said, you know, I have the same thing. I had the exact same problem. He wanted to describe what was going on there. And, uh, he, and then he said, and I just want to tell you, because we need to know we're not alone. Exactly right. How many times do we think we're alone? And have you ever found this? And then you get up the courage, you tell somebody, and they say, I have this problem, or so-and-so has that exact same problem. Because we're not alone in it, whatever it is. Whatever it is, we're not alone. Um, okay, so David faced his Goliath. He faced his problem. Second thing I see is David gets angry. He actually gets angry here. Verse 26, David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? And then just listen to this sort of sneer in his voice. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who does he think he is? David's getting his anger up. You know? And, and, and he's getting his anger, I think, at Goliath. But I think he's also getting his anger up at the Israelite army. Like, who, why are you running away? You know? Because we got God on our side. Why, why are you running away? And obviously there's an anger. We know that's a good anger. We sort of need to hang on to that anger for things that are wrong and injustice. We need to be angry about those things. Then there's an anger we need to let go of, by the way. And how do we tell the difference? Well, if, if, if somebody did or said something to us, it's probably the anger we need to let go of quickly. You know? If we're offended, we probably need to let go of that quickly. But if there's injustice, we need to hang on to that. And we need to be angry at that, right? And, uh, and we need to be angry at the problem. So, um, you, you know, so if I ask, you know, hypothetically, I'm sure this would not happen in this congregation, but if I ask someone, you know, what's your problem? And they said, well, my wife, my husband, they're the problem. No, they're not the problem. 
Sin is the problem that's working in them and in you. Satan is the problem. They're not the problem. Then get angry at what the problem really is. Right? Get angry at what the problem really is. So here's, this will sound sort of strange, but, but let me ask you a couple questions to try to get you angry. Okay? Um, what's the problem doing to you? How's it affecting you? How's it affecting your family? How's it affecting your friends? How's it affecting your life? You know, if it's a negative way, then let's start getting angry. You know? Um, and, or to flip that whole question around and ask it in the opposite way, how much better would your life be without that problem? And let's get angry with it. Let's get angry. Because that's what David does. He gets angry. He faced his Goliath. He got angry. The third thing I want to point out is he relied on his experience, what he had experienced before. Verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth, and if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. You see, he's going back to what he's done. He's killed lions and bears. And by the way, he didn't have a high-powered rifle either. He had to get real close and personal and kill him, right? Um, so he knew he could do that. So he had confidence he could take care of Goliath. Not, not just because God was with him, but he knew how to use a sling. It's not just a, a miracle shot. He used that sling all the time. Right? And, and he knew how to do it. And he knew he could do it because he'd done it before. So sometimes I think of this with certain temptations you might face. And it's sort of like, what have you done in the past that has helped you get through that issue? Whatever it is. You know? Who were you with? What was the situation when you successfully did it? One of the things, you know, I don't get too anxious anymore, but one of the things that still makes me anxious sometimes is when I get really busy. I have a really busy week, and I'm like, how am I going to get everything done, you know? And I start, and one of those sort of loose perspective sort of thing, and, and I, start, I start to panic a little bit, and I get anxious. And then I have to remember, because this past week was sort of one of those one of those weeks. You know, you get ready for church, you have Thursday night Bible study. I had two of them, I have two Emmaus things that that I'm responsible for as well. And and plus being gone a couple days, there were all these little things to take care of and and um, and how you know and, and, and I, there's a couple things that, that remind me that really helped me from the past because I've been through it before. One is if some things don't get done, it's okay. Second of all, it helps me if I'm organized. If I have a clean desk, now, now this is sort of, I, I realize I'm sort of just, um, I, I don't know what the word is, but um, I, I'm just sort of making myself feel better with a clean desk. If I have a clean desk and everything's sort of like a prioritized, I need to do this, 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 then I feel I'm in control. I'm not in control, but at least it helps me feel that way. So sometimes I just need to stop and say, no, I'm going to clean everything up, I'm going to organize, I'm going to do this. But the biggest thing is this. I've been through that situation so many times. I've always gotten done what I need to get done. You know, God's always helped me. Certain things have gotten much better than I thought, taking less time because God's been there. and It's always worked out. Why do I fear? In this past week, I wasn't that worried. God's going to help me. It's going to work out. Right? So far. Yeah. So, <clears throat> he relied on his past experience. What about you? You know what? And how have you been through that? Where has it been successful? You know? 
and work that. The last thing I want to say is this, wrap this up. Um, and, but this is the most important. He trusted in God. Can't emphasize this enough. He trusted in God. Verse 37. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this priest. The Lord will save me. I'm going to count on the Lord. And if we hear... Um, one of David's psalms, he wrote many of these psalms, we call psalms. Just listen for the trust he has here. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall never be shaken. For God alone my soul waits in silence. For my hope is in him, is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. He's just trusting in God. And we need to just trust in God. He's going to take care of it. Give it to God. Lay it. You come praying, lay it before the cross and leave it there. I heard a pastor once say, and I thought, Oh, this is right on, right? He said, well, our job is when we go to pray is to take our burdens to God and leave them at the cross. And he says, if you go and pray, and when you're done praying, you still have your burden, he says, you weren't praying, you were just griping to God. <laughs> How many of us just gripe to God? You know, God, I have this problem. No, we, we're supposed to leave it. Leave our burdens at the cross, at the foot of the cross. Um, because we trust him to take them. We trust him to take them. God doesn't want you to live with your Goliath or problem with them. I'm convinced. He wants you to be able to face it. To get angry at it. To rely on what you've done before. But mostly to trust in him. And Goliath would fall. We didn't really tell the whole story, and I had Luke stop a little bit short. What a lot of people don't realize is when David threw the stone and it hit Goliath on the head, it didn't kill him. David went up to Goliath's own sword and chopped off his head. That's how victory was accomplished. But Goliath fell. And your problem can fall too. I'm not saying it's going to happen today. I'm not going to say it's going to happen this week or this month. Because we think the long term. But God is at work. Maybe other things, factors have to come together so it can happen. But God is at work. And that's our trust. And that's our faith. Father God, help us indeed just to give our burdens to you, to lay them at the foot of the cross. And we so want to take them up again. I don't know why, but we just... <clears throat> but no, let's just leave them before. Let's leave our problems in your hands and to trust in you to take care of them. And trust in you again. Thank you, Father, for the victory. The victory you will give us. The victory in Jesus. Amen.
But today, Father, we'll have a victory in Jesus as well. If our problem is solved, victory in Jesus. If our problem is not solved, we will overcome. As we will be those who give our burdens to you. We will be those who live a different way. Who live in peace and not anxiety because of our problems. Because we know you are in control. Always have been, always will. Praise be to God. And may we live with the victory of Jesus always in mind. Amen. 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 Amen.